So I really appreciate and grateful for being here. Thank you, HITB team, for giving me opportunity to share my work from this platform. My title of this presentation is "Gazing Ahead: What Modern RF Combat Will Look Like in the Next Decade." So imagine robotic tanks that maneuver themselves across desert terrain, avoiding landmines. Thank you, Kupal. So I really appreciate and grateful for being here. Thank you to HITB team. So in this presentation, we will be di uh, discussing about soldiers' uniform, like what are the different sensors indicated, and the IoT warfare, like Internet of Battlefield things, convergence of cyber and electronic warfare, jamming, RF-focused drones, counter techniques, and some of the case studies. So quickly moving forward. What do you think of a world where every device you own is connecting with each other to do your daily task? You open your eyes in the morning, and a device is telling you the whole list of tasks you need to perform today. Also, you give instruction through your mobile phone, and your coffee is ready while you get ready for the office. So, where CCTV cameras can identify and stop excessive force before it turns deadly. to wearing sensors which report with real time health data to alert patients to emergencies before they happen even as drones which is being used to support first responder iot has transformational impact on our life across vertical sectors so there's a whole thing of task that iot is helping us with so we can say a world without iot is like living in a stone age it may seems like a big claim for some of you but when you see the bits of iot reflected in every mundane task of our daily life you will agree to it so how important is the internet of things in our life and even question is how secure you think it is so in this uh, slide you can see the benefit of iot are undeniable iot can bring much of the physical world from industrial asset to common place devices to people into a connected ecosystem resulting in enhanced customer experience and a better business outcomes so increased connectivity and digitization in industry has produced an exponentially expanding attack surface behind which is safety security and critical services so cars are now turning into computer on wheels and airplanes have become flying data center but this increase in power and connectivity has largely happened without designing inadequate security protocols so for example iot can improve multiple aspects of an uh, airport such as by regulating traffic flow and helping passengers navigating using wifi beacons nfc tag and geolocation streamlining security checkpoints with biometry like uh, facial recognition and inducing the number of lost bags using electronic luggage tag and sensors so given the potential and influence that iot has on the world it is worth looking at the security risk associated with these devices So, in simple words, uh, Internet of Things is a broad network of connected physical ob objects or devices that communicate with each other and exchange data without human interference. So, generally, all these devices are capable of collecting data, processing information, and transferring data. So, IoT is wonderful in many ways, but unfortunately, technology has not matured yet, and it is not entirely safe. The entire IoT environment, from manufacturer to user. We still have many security challenges to overcome, such as manufacturing standards, update management, uh, physical hardening, user uh, knowledge and awareness. So now it is not only with uh, us or our computer, but there are also things that interact with the internet without our intention. These things are con uh, continually communicating with the internet. A fridge sending an update of the food inside or our vehicle, transmitting message to the mechanic to inform of its oil level. so here we can see in certain sense sodan is a like a guy who walks throughout the city and knocks on every door he sees but instead of door sodan knocks on every ipv4 address and instead of some city there is the whole world so if you ask that guy about a particular type of door or about door in a particular part of the city he certainly would know something and would provide you the information how many of those doors are there who answer them and who uh, what do they say so sodan gives you the same information about these iot items how are they called what type of are they and is there any web interface one can use 
so there is no problem of knocking on door unless you find they out that there are a lot of door with no lock and no one can stop the bad guy from breaking in so on the other hand census is also a search engine for the iot relying on the same basic principle but it's more precise when it comes to searching for vulnerabilities so oh yes uh, census can actually give you a list of devices with a particular vulnerability for example uh, those vulnerable to hard bleed so if it's an ip address you can see everything it sees and even control it if it supports something like that if it's a router you can change its setting if it's a baby monitor you can talk to the poor baby in a scary voice so it's all up to your moral uh, standards so here we can see the common cia triad for iot security where uh, c for confidentiality authentic uh, authenticity and integrity now the main thing is uh, confidentiality ensures like how is iot information secured so at rest it can be a uh, very rare integrity which means what integrity methods are used and availability is like how is availability assured so we need to make sure like our iot a lot of iot devices are extremely small in size and fall into the category of low resources devices or constrained uh, resource devices so their physical limitations allow them to process low power resources only which makes adding more layer of security difficult so there is a serious trade off between security and resources when it comes to iot and it's more complicated when we discuss about the internet of battlefield things so uh, ensuring that each device has the control to maintain data confidentiality and integrity within an organization is necessary so in addition investigation of iot security along with data integrity holds practical significance in iot development so on the right side you can see pyramid of pain which is based on cisco iot reference model and it is evaluated from a vulnerability perspective of the iot system so the most vulnerable part of the iot system with the least impact if suppressed and attack is placed on the top of the pyramid sensors sit on the top as they are the most vulnerable being the most accessible part of the iot ecosystem the next vulnerable part is the communication between sensors and accumulated data by the sensors the attackers can get access to this data through sensors or by getting into the network then comes the hardware abstraction and firmware which stipulate application programming interface for the interaction between the application and the data lastly the least accessible part at the bottom of the pyramid is hardware platform such as soap fpga dsp and etc so even through the hardware platform which is at the bottom of the pyramid it is also one of the uh, that deserves most uh, uh, major attract attention before it has the highest uh, damage impact to a system in case of an attack so it can be said that hardware is the foundation of the iot system and the most pain causing part in the case of a cyber attack incident so therefore iot security should begin with the high, high, uh, hardware security now let's see some of the case studies like how iot devices can be considered in the defense so for example uh, at a iot uh, sorry department of defense fuel depot tank level temperature and flow routes could be inexpensively and precisely monitored inventory usage and payment could be easily integrated with the backend uh, business systems perimeter security could be enhanced with more inexpensive cameras and motion sensor like soil water and air quality quality could be continuously measured for leaks or emission in similar way with the addition of internet capability real time situational information can be relayed to command and support facilities remotely from the battle mill but if enemy takes advantage of vulnerabilities in such devices or networking or compromised devices it may allow the enemy to provide false information to the war fighters and the supporting remote organization so clearly it's important to prioritize addressing the highest risk vulnerabilities already installed in mission system such as ensuring that the information is encrypted where needed implement policies and uh, processes to ensure supply chain risk management of a broader array of potential devices that could be deployed with our uh, troops uh, another case scenario can be of battlefield situational awareness so very small size and low cost of sensing and communication devices makes them ideal for deploying in low power network in forward situation to provide war fighter with enhanced situational awareness now the threat can be imagine that the enemy takes advantage of these vulnerabilities in the devices or networking hacking into or compromise so they can easily get information like what are the uh, what's going on the other side of the uh, battlefield now 
uh, let's understand what is rf so rf signals are a form of electromagnetic wave such as visible light which makes up a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum this em spectrum encompasses all forms of light which ranges from audible frequency such as the ubiquitous uh, 60 hertz through the standard radio band which include am radio fm radio tv channels and other rf band so the spectrum continues through infrared visible and ultraviolet light light to higher form of em energies like x ray gamma ray and cosmic ray so radio, uh, radio frequency can be a complex subject to uh, navigate but it does not have to be if you are just getting started with radio or maybe you cannot find that old reference book about antenna aperture this session will help you it is intended to provide you basic understanding of rf technology and what are the future threats which we need to address so let's see some uh, what basically lights inside the radio wave spectrum the following frequency allocation chart here shows various commercially used devices with their application and frequency based on the ntia and fcc here you can see fm radio operating on 100 megahertz the gps and cell phone somewhat near to 900 megahertz while adsb signal on frequency 1090 megahertz which can directly capture from uh, rtl devices and 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth which is used by more than 300 consumer devices including microwave oven cordless phone and wireless network uh, like wifi and bluetooth so invisible and ignored our devices are currently screaming out large amount of information about us our habit our pattern of life to anyone who care to listen so let's see some example of what is commonly being broadcasted and what can be done with this information so i think like we already know this kind of attack so i will uh, quickly move forward through it and uh, i will discuss about the uh, from the defense perspective more so uh, basically we think about the uh, signals in two domain time domain and frequency domain time domain when dealing with the world of radio frequency communication often there are two families of instrumentation used for measuring radio operation and performance the first family is represented by the time domain measurement such as the amplitude of a signal over a given time typically which is measured with an oscilloscope this instrument also include basic digital meters power supplies and other related equipment time domain instruments are usually utilized when analyzing baseband performance power supply uh, operation current draw etc meanwhile frequency domain which is a, since a uh, majority of the rf communication performance parameter regulations and design constraints are measured in the world of frequency domain measurement usually take the form of power versus frequency so typically measured with a spectrum analyzer instruments also include signal generator which is used to produce carriers and data modulated signal as well as network analyzer so uh, you can like using the rf frequencies uh, rtl devices hdr like uh, hek rf uh, blade rf we can impl uh, simply implement our own uh, live rf broadcast then we can uh, spoof the gps frequencies and uh, we can transmit the gps signal to spoof the locations so we can like simply do it using the gps hdr be a uh, sim libraries we can also uh, make our own virtual radar using the rtl 1090 or uh, integrate with uh, rtl uh, sorry virtual radar to track adsb signals other thing is uh, using gr gsm to capture the mc mc of any mobile number so if we like uh, get the uh, kc number we can even decrypt the sms and listen to call cell phones so mc capture is again one of the rf attack uh, another attack is like a replay attack which can be implemented against the car another is like uh, you can uh, record the signals and you can replay so you can uh, hack into the smart lights so we all know like wifi uses radio to communicate but so do the other 99 plus protocol that make up the world of mobile cellular and the internet of things i have not discussed those uh, slides up before uh, in a practical way because we have already did the presentation on uh, those things so uh, i will be discussing about from the defense perspective so all these new radio enabled devices bring with them new invisible threat enterprises will need to be able to react to new threats entering their environment through the internet of radio so some of the basic attacks can be rf attacks can be sniffing bot driving evil twin attack replay attack uh, firmware update exploitation jamming uh, physical layer protocol abuse or make layer uh, channel reservation abuse so we often hear about the danger of dark web but the internet of radio is not merely dark it's invisible 
so any wireless network is going to have a few security risk so it is important to address them now the first issue is that the fake that the sensors are broadcasting all the information they have continuously and adversary listening into the network could easily send see all the information which is being broadcasted or even worse fabricate their own data to confuse the clustering algorithms the other issue is that an adversary listening to the network could attempt to flood the network with packets to prevent the sensors from transmitting their data like those old ddos attack so in a press conference in 2016 nato allied ministers formally agreed to include cyber operation in its war domain along with the air land and sea operation and to amplify the defense of its uh, computer network so declaring cyber as an official domain of warfare allows nato to improve planning and better manage resources for cyber defense operation so what does it mean is like uh, nato can now answer to any cyber attack sorry any kind of attack with the air land or sea attack so if there's any conventional cyber uh, attack they can answer with weapons as well now the military face of new reality one with multi domain challenges the way military build its forces integrate its planning and synchronize its operation must change quickly so in modern military lingo there are five interrelated domain land maritime air space and cyber space now the cyber space domain is wholly man made and is ever changing so in the emerging multi domain reality an attack will come from multiple domains simultaneously jamming of radio and data link persistent surveillance and precise long range fire so military needs to instill to its commander the ability to deal and ambiguity and incomplete information the fog of the war in digital age so yet continue to operate in a manner consistent with the intent now so there's a famous quote from the book art of war by sun tzu there are not more than five musical notes yet the combination of these five gives rise to a more melodies that can ever be heard there are not more than five primary colors yet in combination they produce more hues than can ever even be seen there are not more than five cardinal tastes yet combination of them yield more flavors than can ever be tasted so now we can imagine about the results from convergence of ground airborne naval space and cyber so uh, as we examine history it becomes almost incredible that we would not have anticipated our great social media platforms to be infiltrated and weaponized against us so here we will be seeing like some of the basic uh, few uh, history of electronic warfare so electronic warfare has come a long way from the early days of basic signal intelligence and has conveyed a wide variety of technology and use cases like starting from the uh, russo japanese war in 1904 uh, 1904 where the birth of signal which is also told as the birth of signal intelligence so japan ability to intercept and analyze russian naval transmission played a significant role in the eventual japanese victory then uh, moving forward like uh, it was used by the uk as well uh, in 1940 like the battle of britain uh, tuning the tide with radar so using a new breakthrough in radio transmitter the resonant kvt magneton and detector arranged a range of different heights and angles to pick up the reflected uh, radio waves bouncing off enemy uh, aircraft raf fighters could be quickly intercept uh, directed to intercept again uh, in like a cuban missiles uh, crisis in 1962 uh, they for the deceptive drones they have used the uh, ew the electronic warfare so equipped with an early form of electronic uh, deception drones narrowly missed featuring in one of the cold war hottest moment the plane was uh, the pl plan was for unmanned ryan model 147 which is fitted with the receivers for cuba soviet uh, built surfaces to air missile and to overfly the island so uh, even like uh, uh, this was used for in the v uh, vietnam war some of the other attack was like in a battle of latinkia where electronic warfare uh, even goes to the sea and the stuxnet uh, gulf war where the gps at war so while targeting uh, and tracking uh, smart uh, smart missile guidance the gulf war highlight highlighted the susceptibility of gps to jamming with even some relatively unsophisticated devices providing capable of masking the weak signal from the system's capability so gps still remains vulnerable to jamming and spoofing today now let's see like what happens in the future like the, in the quantum superpower because like quantum te technology could be game changer across the globe and along for the world of ew application 
so as we currently know them quantum communication systems are inherently secure quantum radar can see through steel quantum metrology offers an unjammable uh, navigation and quantum cryptography promises an unbreakable uh, uncrackable codes so the fight to master quantum technology could render its adversary ew systems redundant overnight and china clearly wants to win that race so uh, modern military forces are required to operate in an increasingly complex electronic uh, electromagnetic environment which has recently been or, or recognized as an operational environment so all modern forces conduct operation that depend on the use of eme the recognized use for the military forces to have access to and utilize the eme creates vulnerabilities and opportunities for em uh, spectrum warriors so therefore a new operational discipline has been set up accordingly named electromagnetic uh, electromagnetic spectrum operation or emso uh, here you can see like uh, emso consists of not only traditional electronic warfare but includes several other discipline which operate in electromagnetic environment such as signal intelligence as part of information operation spectrum management and cyber electromagnetic activities electronic warfare remains the most uh, main combat discipline of emso the other thing is signal intelligence is included in the wider framework of information operation and refers to the ability to exploit signal data and information that rely on the use of electromagnetic uh, spectrum as a physical layer so ew techniques use electromagnetic energy on a targeted frequency effectively dominating the insurgents ability to understand sense hear or communicate so ew technology can also address remote control uh, improvised exploitative devices where sophisticated electronic countermeasures jam the control signal and prevent detonation by telephone radio control toys or other uh, radio jamming emitters so uh, electronic warfare is divided in three domains which is electronic attack electronic protection and electronic support here electronic uh, uh, warfare it comes like uh, military operations are executed in an information environment which is increasingly complicated by the electromagnetic spectrum now it is also called like esm ecm eccm uh, which means like electronic support measures electronic counter measures and electronic counter counter measures so elements of uh, command and control warfare or for the military deception uh, for the physical deception we use this kind of techniques now electronic attack uh, involves the offensive use of EL, uh, em energy directed energy or anti radiation weapons to attack personal facilities or equipment with the intent of degrading so some of the things uh, which comes under uh, electronic attacks can be electronic intelligence like uh, uh, foreign non communication electromagnetic information uh, common can be uh, communication intelligence which works to, like to uh, identify if there's any uh, foreign communication transmission which is intercepted by other than the intended uh, recipients then uh, some of the like advantages can be uh, for the personal facilities and equipment we use active and passive energy to attack and uh, four classes of ea can be classified as jamming modifier uh, radio absorbing materials then physical destructions while in non destruction ea it comes like uh, jamming noise sport barrage sweep uh, chaff plates so these are all like non destructive electronic attack now uh, electronic protection which involves like action taken to protect friendly forces like personal facilities or equipment for any effects of friendly or enemy use of electromagnetic spectrum that degrade neutralize or destroy friendly combat capability so here we can see uh, army trainer successfully used cyber weapons and electronic warfare technology to throw a simulated tank a shield a training exercise conducted at the army national training center at fort erwin so the exercise reinforced the need for the ew and cyber protection technology that is under development by entities such as repeat uh, army repeat capabilities office so this tank had to stop dismount and get out of their protection reduce their mobility so exercise like this one help determine the technology and equipment which is necessary to achieve this effect in the field if we don't win the cyber and electronic warfare fight then the next maneuver may not matter because we may not get to it so while interference generally describe unintentional form of uh, disruption during wireless communication jamming describe the deliberately interference with the blocking of such communication so as the name suggest jamming antennas 
are especially used to interfere with the radio noise or signal. So in electronic warfare, these interference are meant to disrupt control of a battle. For example, jammer radio uh, interfering signal toward an opponent radar, blocking the receiver with high concentrated energy signals. So the two main jamming techniques are noise technique and repeater technique. Sport jamming, sweet jamming, uh, barrier jamming are three most common types of noise jamming, whereas DRFM jamming is the most uh, common type of repeater jamming. So in sport jamming, like uh, we do the kind of noise jamming where a jammer focuses on all of its power on a single frequency, rendering the technique ineffective against a frequency agile radar. So sweeping uh, jamming is the process of sweep, uh, shifting a jammer full power from one frequency to another. So this sweeping motion jams multiple frequency in quick succession, although not all at the same time. While meanwhile, barrier jamming is the jamming of multiple frequency at once by a single jammer. So the main drawback of this technique is that the jammer spreads its power uh, power across multiple frequency, making it comparatively less powerful at a simple frequency, a single frequency. So now the question is. Uh, how can we secure ourselves and how do we communicate while someone is like doing a jamming attack on us? So wireless digital, uh, wireless digital communication system generally employ radio frequency signal to transmit information. So transmitter needs to convert digital signal uh, messages, which is represented in bits to RF signal while receiver convert this received RF signal back to digital messages. Now on the transmitter side, upon receiving bits from upper layer, the transmitter first modulates them to discrete baseband signals, then converts them into analog signal using a digital to analog converter, and finally up convert them to RF signal. So these RF signals go through the wireless channel and reach the receiver. Upon receiving the RF signal, the receiver performs the inverse processing. It down converts and sample the received uh, signal to receive baseband signal, and then demodulate them to bit. So in ally friendly jamming, upon detecting a, a transmission, the authorized device can employ proper signal processing techniques to remove the jamming signal from the received mixed signal. So in contrast, the unauthorized device does not have the secret key and cannot remove the interference which is introduced by allied jamming signals. Now in figure two, uh, you can see for, uh, which further illustrate like uh, ally friendly jamming where one ally is presented for simplicity. So assuming the ally jammer the unauthorized and unauthorized devices all are in the same area. So as mentioned earlier, the ally jammer and uh, authorized jammer, including A1, A2 and AJ in figure, which share a secret key K. The ally jammer AJ, which uses a serial random number generator with K as the seed to continuously emit jamming signal X of J. So when the unauthorized device even transmits signal to X of E1, to another unauthorized device E3, the signal received by E3 will be the mixture of both X of E1 and some portion of X of J. With enough jamming power, the jamming signal from A of J can effectively distort the signal X of E1 at E3. So as a result, the wireless communication between unauthorized device E1 and E3 is disabled. When A1 transmits signal X of A1 to A2, the jamming signal X of J will also distort the received signal at A2. So, however, uh, this like to remove X of J from the mix signal, authorized devices need to synchronize with the allied jamming signal, estimate their values in the mix signals and remove them from the received mix signal to recover meaningful transmission. So this is how like we exactly communicate between uh, when there's uh, some kind of uh, jamming attacks which is being performed. So in real time scenario, uh, after the designation like which is received by external RWR, that analyzes the victim radar signal for key parameter, the jammer performs the actual following actions that generate ECM signal, which is intentionally by independent oscillators such as VCO. So uh, here you can see the EA18G roller, which uses a powerful electronic attack jammer to blind enemy radar and protect allied aircraft during missions into hostile territory. So unfortunately, the very high energy from the jammer also blocks onboard communication. So Incans like uh, collects a sample of the jammer interference and uses that sample to create an inter, uh, anti-interference signal, which it then uh, mixes into the receive path of, for the protected radio. The result of mixing the interference and anti-interference is that they cancel each other out, leaving only the desired reception. So this is the real-time scenario like where these uh, signals is being used.
now we can see uh, radar performance in frequency bone so uh, radar is like most most probably the there are few factors which affects the radar performance some of them is radar power frequency change pulse rate the kind of antenna we are using and the scan pattern so scan pattern which means like uh, influence of amount of energy which is directed towards the target radar uh, again like the propagation will depends the kind of receiver we have the kind of transmitter we have so these are some of the factors on which uh, our parameter uh, the received power will depend so let for an example if we are transmitting in 100 kilo uh, volt of power uh, from the transmitter so after like uh, let's say if it's on a distance of 10 km we will only receive the power in picovolts so rest all of is like gone in the reflection uh, propagation the environment factor in everything so here in this image uh, you can see some of the rcs for the uh, major uh, war fighters so radar cross section is like a major of how detectable an object is by the radar so therefore it is called electromagnetic signature of the object now a larger rcs indicates that an object is more easily detectable an object reflects a limited amount of radar energy back to the source the factor that influence this include the material of the target which is uh, made the size of the target relative to the wavelength of the uh, illuminating radar signal the absolute size of the target the incident angle the polarization uh, of the transmitted in received uh, radiation so while important in detecting target strength of the emitter and distance are not factor that affect the calculation of an rcs because rcs is a property of target reflectivity so here we can see like the example of b2 spirit f22 uh, raptor uh, f35 lightning so while no aircraft is totally invisible to radar still aircraft make it more difficult for conventional radar to detect or track the aircraft effectively so in addition to reducing the infrared in acoustic emissions a uh, still vehicle must avoid radiating uh, any other detectable energy such as from on board radar communication system or rf leakage from electronic enclosure now modern military forces rely heavily on a variety of complex high technology electronic offensive and defensive capability so traditionally cyber and electronic warfare were distinct entities but now cyber warfare involves action by a nation state or intense international organization to attack and attempt to damage another nation's computer or information network through so for example computer virus or a denial of service attack the military has already designated cyber space as the fifth domain of war so along with four physical domains like air land and space and its milling making the electromagnetic spectrum the sixth domain so the cyber space operation are the employment of cyber space capabilities so here you can see ew has been a sleeping beauty hidden away and forgotten for a generation now it is a dragon about to be reawaken and nato leaders who continue to ignore its significance to do so at the aerial alliance peril so here you can see like what exactly it looks like the like how all of these five domains are integrated what is it going in the radio domain so in convergence of electronic warfare and computer network exploitation attack within the radio frequency spectrum it describes how the integration of ip capabilities in system using radio frequency for communication provide attacker the ability to exploit systems on isolated network so unlike current cyber and electronic warfare protection teams which are focused on vulnerabilities within their respective areas adversaries which are focused on achieving desired effect and end state goals this threat is highlighted by oversight in software and communication systems which developers in recognizing like uh, vulnerabilities which is introduced during the integration of hardware and software so digital technology have transformed warfare beginning with the emergence of network centering operation in the 1990 digital technologies have become the basic of weapons tactics and strategy so today war fighter use connected devices to coordinate air strikes on the battlefield drones are controlled from thousands of miles away commander watch real time video of streaming video of the battle space and logistics and the border supply chain which are regulated and managed by complex digitally technologies so the next generation of emerging technologies such as like artificial intelligence smart drone robot additive manufacturing will make the military even more dependent on uh, digital technologies so here we can see a quick difference between kinetic weapons and cyber weapons so kinetic weapons 
almost uh, always produced in irreversible physical effect whereas cyber weapons can produce completely reversible effect so although a small fraction of weapons for example rubber bullet can deliver a quick recover uh, quickly recoverable outcome most are intended to produce permanent or slow recovery effect while cyber weapons can produce permanent damage to the physical world such as in the case of stuxnet which caused physical destructions of centrifuge other cyber effect can be completely reversed by either the attacker or the victim for example uh, when a denial of service attack stops the target systems uh, return to normal encryption such as in uh, used in uh, ransomware is also reversible given the correct decryption key so indeed ransomware relies on reversibility in order to be effective demonstration of the capability to deny access and subject belief that it can be undone are the predicate of to the victim willingness to pay ransom importantly uh, reversibility can be an asset of or limitations of cyber weapons depending on the objective of their use so it is difficult to reverse engineer and reuse kinetic weapon since they are typically damaged uh, beyond reuse of a uh, condition of their employment so because cyber weapons are often compromised of easily replicable software they offer more ability for others to abuse analyze reuse uh, the weapons by simply copying the software and replaying the construct of its employment whether separately or combined cyber and kinetic weapons are now available as strategic instruments of power and present novel opportunities for pursuing national objective so given the short history of cyber warfare many opportunities remain to uh, for future work to deepen the understanding of cyber weapon as leading gain experience and uh, expertise with cyber weapon it can be integrated with combat and gray zone options will be strengthened so here you can see like command and control why it is most important so one might consider like c3i is the brain of modern warfare so if c3i systems are considered the brain then battlefield sensors are actuators the internet of battlefield things are the key and ears and uh, military maneuver the hands and the feet so it is the preservedness of iot devices that will essentially makes the eyes ear hands and feet in uh, inseparable from the brain so we often think like command and control is a distinct and specialized functions like logistics intelligence electronic warfare or administration with its own peculiar methods vocabulary and occurring independently of other functions but in fact command and control encompasses all military functions and operation giving them meaning and harmonizing them into a meaningful whole so done well command and control aids to our strength done poorly it invites disaster so even against a weaker army now command and control help commander make the most of what they have for people information material and often most of all the time so here you can see uh, now it's time for cable to get serious about the cyber reconnaissance the whole art of war consists of understanding what is on the other side of the hill so in this new world much of the information essential to effective tactical decision making may appear in cyber space long before it is extracted through the dangerous and pain staking process of air and ground reconnaissance so such an information uh, important shift requires a reframing of our traditional approach to reconnaissance it is uh, is it now necessary to expand the concept of military reconnaissance to include the cyber domain if so how should such a capability be organized in the military who should do it and what are the hazards with such an uh, an approach so there are many case studies like uh, we can like use the crowdsourced surveillance and the future of internet so let's say uh, for example a by 2030 more than 125 billion computers sensors and iot devices will be connected to the world wide web roughly 15 for every person alive so by that time nearly 80% of the data which is moving on broadband network will be video it is reasonable to assume that these trends will combine to create a ubiquitous network of cloud source surveillance where nearly every event in a public space is recorded and uploaded on the uh, web by private commercial or government actors and commercially used uh, on iot devices now some of the uh, modern equivalent of the world war 3 era warning that loose leaves sink ships maybe ffs don't share your fitbit data on duty so let's consider the uh, this interesting case study where the fitness data company strava recently came under fire when it was discovered that its global heat map 
which aggregated millions of geotrack devices inadequately relieve, uh, reveal the location and outline of us military bases in conflict area so while this incident provide a useful reminder about the importance of operational security it reveals a much more valuable message about the future of route reconnaissance as a military operation so moving a large military force over a unfamiliar terrain presents a formidable challenge so as a result uh, reconnaissance formation have traditionally needed to reconnoiter ahead of the main body to assess the trafficability of routes like strava modern digital map applications on most smartphones uses a process of extracting locations from cell tower to determine rate of improvement along roadways over time this anonymized data provides a useful pattern that can show where vehicle traffic is unrestricted moderately restricted or impassable it can therefore be a powerful tool to augment um, the often dangerous task of ground route reconnaissance so in addition we are merged with ground moving target indicator from aerial reconnaissance platform this data can also be provide a useful analytical tool to distinguish between civilian and military vehicle movements so many locations of the military and intelligence snc bases had already been previously revealed through many other publicly uh, sources but the bigger worry from an operation security standpoint is how activity data from iot devices could be used to identify interesting individual and track them to other sensitive or secretive locations so history suggests that many of the uh, most significant advances in military technology began first as commercial technology so radar for example was originally developed as a tool to avoid ship collision during limited visibility but now it's highly sophisticated for defense purpose these emerging categories for of cyber tools like social media gps enabled iot devices uh, satellite imagery database from public repositories like digital globe which estimates to restrain a data set of uh, 1 lakh tb terabytes are already available in commercial market with adaptation might provide a real advantage to reconnaissance formation and the biggest dangers may come from potential adversaries figuring out patterns of life so by tracking and even identifying military or intelligence uh, agency personnel as they go about their duties or when they come uh, home after deployment these digital footprints that echo the life real life steps of individual underscores a greater challenge each person's connection to online services and personal devices make it increasingly difficult to keep secrets so too often we think secrets lie hidden when they now are mostly open out in the open most both militaries and the public need to be come to grips with the fact that the era of secrets is arguably over so the focus of the internet of battlefield things is to provide situational awareness of the battlefield which is utilizing a network of interconnected sensors actuators and analytical devices so sensor uh, sensors could detect enemy movement and they relay that information in real time to analyst so enabling them to take a uh, tactical decision on positioning areas to avoid or who is crossing a certain area this capability would uh, potentially save resources and soldiers life so making iobt an important topic for the defense to investigate then of course there's a lot of other buzzwords surrounded by this internet of things and the industrial internet of things but the big focus of the army is creating another buzz term adding the b in there so adding the battlefield is a part of this so for me it's always been embedded devices we are talking about uh, event security in embedded development the big difference of course with all these different terms is what you are using them for and often times the mission and what people are using them for don't vary that much but in this case we are talking about very extreme environment environment that have very hostile and downright adversarial so not to say that other type of areas devices are not being attacked daily either locally or across the globe but these devices especially will be targeted and attack often to locations where they are extremely vulnerable so people literally can woke up and do whatever they want uh, them to so and of course the physical environment often times you are putting stuff in the field and you are not ever expecting to get it back and you hope that it stays alive long enough for you to get use out of it and the last thing being that often these devices are not of any use so we are not measuring any electric meter it has to be uh, able to sit there stay alive then have a reasonable assurance 
that it's going to work when we need it and that could be days month in some times or years so there are many challenges with the internet of devices in battlefield so let's see some of them so in the internet of military things encompasses a large range of devices that possess intelligent physical sensing learning and uh, actuation capabilities through virtual or cyber interferences data are integrated into system so these devices include items such as sensor vehicle robot uav uh, human vehicle uh, wearable devices biometric munitions armor weapons and other smart technology so the uh, vision of a connected battlefield where soldiers interface with the myriad of sensor weapon system and support devices and adapt the information to gain situational awareness as the adversary continues to harness the uh, choice of low cost high adaptability devices for developing new attack vector the military will be forced to use commercial of the cell hardware to avoid the repeat obsolescence and vulnerable uh, in which is introduced by custom built hardware systems so the key technology trends in impacting the iomt theme over the next 12 or 24 months includes ai sensor processor transmitter uh, health monitoring system but above all security presents one of the most critical obstacles to iot deployment however in providing security solutions suppliers have had trouble going beyond their traditional domain so however uh, like for example operations in uh, iot security offers most uh, mostly been uh, used by device authentication and network reliability so clearly breaches can occur at the device level network level app level storage level or data level now uh, there are like so many different sensors which we use with our uh, iot devices so sensor uh, sensor technology is evolving fast like eo io sensor radar sonar motion sound detector which have like uh, capabilities augmented is the technology they incorporate improves so for example io or is sensor see further at much further climatic and atmospheric condition whether it is a day or night compared to just a few hours uh, years ago so faced array radar can multitask simultaneously collecting intelligence in the land maritime or air domain without losing range coverage or accuracy so in the same way a uh, microphone can be used to uh, pick up potential languages that are considerably uh, considered hostile or friendly so it can identify different type of weapon sound could check the weapon database to match potential guns that match a certain uh, group of people rfid which can be a uh, rudimentary way to confirm that allies are passing by because rfid takes would be assigned to all soldiers camera like low quality can be used for discerning color patterns of uniform while high quality could be used to take a snap sort of object moving in the uh, field of view with may consume like store uh, startup uh, we need to like send images uh, and there are few challenges as well so gps can be used to track locations of sensor uh, sensors which is registering events uh, rf which is like to track radio frequencies over the area of inter, uh, interest uh, we can use like infrared or thermal sensors to detect heat signature or notify the other sensors to start collecting information uh, vibration can sensors can be used in battlefield to detect vibration and stress which is experienced by the sensors um, for to identify friend or foe which is used by military in conjunction with radar to discern friendly and civilian vehicles and military units um, then again like magnetor pir sensor ultrasonic so there are many view, uh, potential uses of iot sensors in the battlefield and some of them are like in this image you can see how they are integrated in the uh, military uh, like the uniforms so the combination of multiple radio wearable likes smart watches and glasses bio sensor gpo uh, gps equipment these are all some of the gear arming soldiers with life saving information and creating unprecedented visibility into their surrounding so our current and future soldiers are only as good as the communication that shared between them so the sharing of the information wins the fight not the biggest or best bullet we are looking at a soldier as a communication intelligence platform not just a, a person with a weapon system so work, work is underway on new intelligent body which gear that among other things includes on board computer that allow soldiers to chat online during missions and to tie into key defense network to tap into intelligence so uh, as we go down the path of the connected soldier 
the design problem becomes a lot more complicated and the design space much harder because there are so many more ways uh, sensors are just like a radar or frequency so all of a sudden everything is connected and you may uh, have many floor flow leafleting systems so uh, in this example like you can see the drone which is advertised to get some awesome paranomic shots can be used to carry small payloads or grenades so this drone uh, comes with a high explosive warhead which hangs out in the sky until it finds an enemy radar system and then fires on it oh and that uh, driverless car you thought uh, was so cool here it is in tank from a uh, foam at a russian arms fair it includes the t14 so one of the big concerns about such swarms uh, is the issue of autonomy and just how much a real control the operator have over their action so far there have always been a human behind any kill or no kill decisions but with more capable swarm things may not be so simple so uh, here you can see like radar is very hard to detect it by the uh, naked eye and more than 4 lakh like, drones are sold each year worldwide which means a potential threat for society and critical infrastructure illegal filming of ob uh, secret object as well as personal privacy is very common so the ab applicability of drone detection and identification methods depends on requirement mandated by real life scenarios that being said we observe that uh, methods other than rf sensing cannot be solely be reliable to detect or identify intruding drones so on one hand radar vision and acoustic based method can be restrained in various ways such as using stealth technology uh, changing the drone physical shape and rotor using low noise rotor and by emitting natural sound like uh, bird chirps or white uh, noise in addition such methods ex uh, require expensive equipment like high quality video camera that is not designed to detect drone moreover wifi based methods are inherently limited as they cannot detect drones operated by other wireless technologies like 4g and they require knowledge of the drones wifi parameter as well so on the other hand we see that rf sensing based methods for drone detection and identification are adequate to be used in real life scenarios so such methods are independent of the wireless technology which is utilized by the drone like bluetooth 4g or wifi and are immune to physical alteration or differences among drones so however current end methods are not still uh, fully automated nor robust due to the lack of the large uh, labeled database for the drone rf signal some of the major challenges are like uh, if we take an example of airport so we have passengers aircraft cargo uh, parking garages fuel, fuel facilities airline buildings to uh, secure so in like in sense of smr which is surface movement radar we need to upgrade it like we need uh, some kind of uh, upgradation in the ahd system so that it can detect like the small drones as well in the uh, proximity of airport there have been like many incident in last few months where aircraft uh, drones have attacked the aviation industry now the other thing is uh, improvised electro expensive devices which is I ied so many ied devices are using the radio frequency for the uh, for like uh, the controlation and for the command link so these ied are inexpensive easy to build and acquire and very difficult to trace and can be triggered from long distances keeping the operator safe from any detonation or uh, exposure to military forces so rc ied is simply uh, explosive material that is integrated with a handheld wireless devices or device that will trigger upon receipt of a signal from a second wireless handheld devices so these rce devices have caused many fatalities and injury to forces and coalition partner so the solution is like uh, we need to use the counter ied techniques some of the ied technologies only limited by the ingenuity of the person which is manufacturing or deploying the devices now some of the uh, okay we are running out of time so i will quickly move forward um, so the moving portray a war in space such as the uh, they do on earth star fighters dog fight with unlimited maneuverability and range troops transcroops like uh, from orbit to celestial surfaces to deliver space marines so how do we think about a space war war fighting on earth typically looks uh, involves competitors fighting to dominate a physical location opposing military forces like to fight to take control of the land sea and air over a certain part of earth to expand influence over people or resources so space warfare does not follow this paradigm 
satellites in orbit do not occupy or dominate a signal location over time instead satellite provides capabilities such as communication navigation and intelligence catering to earth based militaries therefore to control space is not necessary to physically conquer sectors of space but rather to reduce or eliminate adversary satellite capabilities while ensuring one retains the ability to freely operate their own uh, space capabilities so the weapon used to achieve these goals can be either ground based or space based then can be reversible or irreversible so the furthermore space weapons uh, type like ranges from kinetic weapons much which must physically affect a target to extend of weapon which can reach a target many miles away so kinetic physical counter space like which involves uh, directed ascent set co orbital ascent missiles ground station attack meanwhile non kinetic attack involves electromagnetic pulse attack high powered laser and high powered microwave so non kinetic weapons are all rf based and data like going to be the future of uh, defense so weapons have physically effect on satellite or ground systems without making physical contact lasers can be used to temporarily dazzle or permanently blind the sensors on satellite or cause components to overheat uh, meanwhile like high power uh, microwave weapons can disrupt a satellite electronics or cause permanent damage to its electrical circuits meanwhile we can also see like uh, in counter space weapons we have electronic warfare techniques such as like jamming and spoofing meanwhile on cyber attack we can like perform attacks such as uh, data intercept monitoring uh, data corruption or seizure of control so uh, we have already discussed about the electronic warfare so we know like how the jamming and spoofing is performed now the to understand like how this effect could play in a conflict there are couple of key which is important to understand so the inter, uh, intensity dissipation uh, dissipation which is an electromagnetic signal whether radio frequency or light is emitted from a source the intensity of the signal decreases with the square of the distance from the source so the further away the weaker it is an object 10 km from a surface will experience only 1% of the intensity of an object next to the source so for satellites in orbit where distances are often measured in hundreds or thousands of kilometer a trade would require uh, need high power level to successfully engage with electronic warfare or directed energy weapons so signals in a vacuum only uh, lose strength due uh, due to a distance however when a signal goes through the atmosphere gases such as water vapor and oxygen absorb most of the intensity uh, liquid water also decreases signal strength at many frequencies this means that a ground to space or a surface to ground attack will require more power than a space to space attack of the same distance now precision which is like uh, electronic warfare requires a large degree of precision to execute so in this con- uh, context precision refers to how well an attacker can match the signal or focus on its target so for a jamming attack to be successful the attacker must transmit a jamming signal that matches the signal of the target receiver so even through a jamming uh, a large block of signal in hope like of hitting uh, the right signal so or through simply uh, matching the targeted signal now matching a signal is a combination of achieving the right frequency polarization and signal strength the frequency of the signal refers to the number of time the signal oscillates through space meanwhile spoofing attack require even harder uh, greater precision in addition to matching the uh, signal frequency polarization and signal strength and a uh, spoofer must also broadcast the right type of information on this signal so as an example uh, suppose an attacker wish to use spoofing technique to transmit false troop location to a targeted system so for the attack to work the spoofer must know what signal to broadcast and give data that is close enough to the truth so it is uh, believable so the attacking spoofer must thoroughly understand both the signal itself and how the signal is interpreted by the targeted system to be effective so the more we can in, uh, intensify these insights the better we can understand the stakes of a geopolitical uh, fights in space so for example a 1 kiloton device uh, is believed to be strongest if detonated at around 25 miles from the earth so if detonated much higher the electromagnetic pulse would dissipate too much if too much detonated uh, much lower deep inside the earth atmosphere it would not produce an emp of consequences at all so like all of the electromagnetic uh, all of the electronic devices which we are using will go off 
so in uh, as we are already running out of time so where the military has been uh, driver in connected in machine to machine communication such as radio frequency identification it has been slow to adopt true iot application that need this communication into interoperable automated cycles so communication remains within their uh, given challenges not easily said or aggregated so the challenge is that defense leader wishing to take advantage of the iot phase of complex technological and regulatory landscape that threatens to mire their efforts in endless choices and challenges so the army has done a lot of work on system that can work without a constant uh, internet connection to get around this but because they are not linked to the internet they have limited uh, limited utility but all of this expanded connectivity and technology brings a host of risk too so for one creating wifi enabled uniform and weapon could give enemies many more digital target if malicious hacker can manipulate sensors to fake chemical attack those false signal can be deliberating so then and now it is hard to overstate the importance of information to military commander everywhere while the rest of the world was waking up to the internet in 1996 the military for example was already outlining plans for information superiority so with information so central to all activities the military is naturally hungry for uh, technology or tools that improve communication routing or processing of information so uh, these are all the people like i am really thankful for their research their work uh, standards uh, uh, and uh, academia so you can uh, follow them on uh, and read this paper oh, in conclusion i will say like uh, the combined effect of non federated network encoded data on the network or increased use of wireless devices and advancement in high power jammer will continue to push the realm of cyber electronic warfare the growth in these two rule realms with undoubtedly continue bringing challenges to the future warfare that will move the uh, center of focus from kinetic operation to date of non kinetic the threat of overpowering cyber and ew forces will likely generate increased funding of uh, non kinetic research in a shift in operational mentality so could this be the next cold war or just the unseen war so uh, this is all about me uh, you if you have any questions you can reach out to me either on email or uh, you can uh, tweet me uh, thank you for your attention i hope you enjoyed my says a talk if you have any questions i will be in the hitv studios in 5 minutes where i will be happy to answer them please ask your questions on the discord channel otherwise you can always reach out to me on my linkedin and twitter thank you so much